Hey, what's up guys? Phoenix here, and this video is going to be another Yu-Gi-Oh! discussion video, and this time we're going to be talking about why Trickstar Sky Strikers won YCS New Jersey that happened this past weekend in June 2018. And it didn't even just win the event, it absolutely dominated the event. It was always very high up in terms of quantity of decks at the top tables during the Swiss rounds, and then during Top 32's breakdown, it took up half of the slots in Top 32. Trickstar Sky Strikers took up 16 out of the 32 Top 32 decks decks, which is a very significant thing to understand. Now, I've been talking to a lot of people over the past 24 hours, and most people that don't seem to understand why this deck is actually functionally very good seem to want to discredit the deck's success into just being a fluke and something that was completely enabled by the new end of match procedures that were used at YCS New Jersey. The new match, end of match procedures obviously being you end your phase and then the game is over and then the match is over. You determine a winner or a draw if that's the case from that sort of thing. And now while those new end of match procedures definitely did play a part as to why people wanted to play Trick Stars for this event, or why some Trick Star decks got some wins that otherwise they may not have gotten in the Swiss rounds, it definitely wasn't the major identifying factor in terms of why this deck succeeded in terms of doing as well as it did. It's definitely a small little portion of why it did well, but a much bigger picture paints itself and presents itself to you if you understand more of the functionality of why when you combine Sky Strikers with the Trickstar engine, the deck just does functionally very well in terms of solving issues that both the regular Sky Striker deck and the Trickstar deck have historically had. Like basically, when you put these two decks together, they very much combine into a very cohesive strategy that sort of pick each other up in terms of where their weaknesses lie and sort of just benefit each other just uncont uncontested. Like, they uncontested benefit each other in terms of how they operate. Like, there are some interactions that actually conflict with one another, like, you know, having the trick stars in your main monster zone, thusly not being able to activate things like Hornet Bit or uh, Engage at certain points in the game, but that usually isn't that big of a factor when you consider how plays are being structured and how well the deck can play outside of those hindrances. But why this is significant to look at in terms of a result is that because YCS New Jersey was the last North American event that is taking place before the North American WCQ and is the last large-scale event that is going to be taking place with the North American card pool of having Link Karibo, that is something to, you know, draw conclusions and results from, again, going into the North American WCQ, which is going to be happening in literally a month from now. It's very much, we're in the home stretch of this year of Yu-Gi-Oh! Nationals is right around the corner, and other countries are currently having their Nationals. Euros is right around the corner as well. But while Euros will be another large-scale event, they do not have Link Karibo, which actually does affect a lot because it makes Altergeist worse and it makes Goki worse. So basically, if anything, it'll just make the Trickstar deck better. <laughs> but anyway, so the reasoning why this is significant, again, like I said, last large-scale event that actually has a card pool we can utilize for Nationals, and it was also the first event that was played using the new end of match procedures, as we talked about previously, so that is going to be something that we have to observe going into Nationals as well. And so looking at the results of YCS Jersey is definitely something that we need to basically break down. If you don't understand why Trickstar Sky Striker is a good deck and how it functions well, then this video is definitely something you want to listen to, because if you think the deck topped as much as it did because of a fluke, because of time, you're actually just not correct. There's a lot of good things the deck has going for it, and some of the deck's you know, strengths enable it to not even have to go into time and win, and that's something you definitely want to be understanding if you're trying to either play the deck for nationals, or if you're trying to play against the deck for nationals. Like, it's definitely the deck to beat going into nationals, and so if you want to understand how to beat it, you have to understand how it functions. But basically, if you look at both of the engines that are utilized in the deck, the Trickstar deck and the Sky Striker engine, basically you can identify the problems that both decks have on their own in terms of being played as pure decks. Trickstars, since its inception back in last August, has had problems with dealing with boards. Literally any monster with over 1900 attack is something that Trickstar usually struggles with in terms of its own built-in in-engine cards. It's definitely not something that can 
it, the Trickstar deck is definitely not something that on its own can just pinpoint out monsters on the field. The deck's main win conditions in the past have been with unsearchable cards like Scapegoat and Eater of Millions to out monsters or to make link plays happen, or just by cheesing your opponent out of the game with Reincarnation, Droll, and Lockbird. Those have pretty much been the only real ways that the deck actively, like, plays the game in an aggressive way. Like, it's definitely not been something that has been, uh, that's been a big, you know, you're not looking at Trickstar monsters and saying these can break your opponent's board or make, you know, extensive plays. It's always been Eater of Millions, Scapegoat, and Reincarnation. Trickstar Reincarnation really being the only real win condition that the deck had in terms of doing something quickly, and even then it had to be combined with cards like Droll and Lockbird. We transition from this and look at the Sky Striker deck, which, while it doesn't have a lot of pressure that it applies to your opponent, which is very different from the Trickstar deck, having, you know, at least monsters that it can summon and do a lot of damage or do some burn damage with, the Sky Striker deck is very slow on the damage output side of things, you know, only controlling one monster at a time usually, but it's very good at outing things on the field via Afterburner, Widow Anchor, Jamming Wave, these sorts of cards being accessible through Engage, and then Hornet Drone also, you know, being the only other card that really boosts consistency in the deck in terms of allowing you to make some link plays happen, usually going into your Sky Striker link monster, not really doing anything extensive. This deck has not a lot of oppression that it can, you know, put your opponent under, but it's one of those things that it's just like, it's going to rip cards away from you turn after turn while it controls the board with its one Sky Striker monster on the field, its one link monster, and then it's just going to do well because of that. When you take this, and then you put it into the Trickstar deck, which has its Trickstar monster lineup, which is very good, while not good at outing boards, is very good at being oppressive on damage output because of Licorice burning, because of Candina being at least large enough to do something in terms of attack stats, and also burning for spell and trap activations, and then Lilybell attacking directly. It's a very small engine that's very good on damage output, and thus very good on oppression, especially when you consider the fact that Candina searches reincarnation, which is a good disruptive trap for your opponent's hand, and all that sort of stuff. And then you have light stage that can pin back rows to where they can't be used. That's all well and good. So those already combine very well together. But then you factor in that Trick Stars has terraforming and light stage, which are cards that you can just burn through very quickly and lose no advantage from doing so, and just keep searching Trick Star cards to your hand. You combine this with startup engage. And thusly, you now have Engage being really, really good in terms of how it can interact with the rest of the deck. Engage is almost always going to be a plus one after you've started making your plays, because it's always going to search a card and then draw a card, at least usually, because of the nature of how the Trickstar deck is in terms of its spell lineup. All the spells in the deck are really good and really good value. And then you are still playing Scapegoat and stuff like that that does contribute to plays later, uh, but basically, you have these things, these interactions, where Engage makes your deck instantly more consistent because you're going to be, you know, terraforming, terraforming, light stage, light stage, and then playing engage, possibly drawing a card off the first engage, but you're definitely going to be going for hornet drones, which is going to summon a token, make Kagari, add back engage, and if the engage wasn't live to get the draw the first time, it's definitely live to get the draw the second time because there's the additional hornet drones engrave that wasn't there before. So you're going to always be getting at least one draw off engage turn one, depending on what your hand is structured as, and while you're doing that, you're going to be getting your Trickstar cards to your hand in a way that you want them to be there. Combine this with the fact that you have the Trickstar cards that are good at doing damage but are not good at outing cards, and now you have the Engage engine with Engage and Hornet Drones, which is another six cards that actually generates tokens for Link Summoning that actually allows you to actually do things into boards. You can go drone into Kagari, get drone back, play drone. That's a link too. You can go into Nightmare Phoenix, Nightmare Cerberus, straight out of the gate, and out a card on the field in your Trickstar deck without actually committing much to the play. Actually really good. It's a really good thing that picks up the weakness of the Trickstar deck, having to rely on Eater of Millions to out cards on the field in the form of monsters. Now you have access to things like Engage or Hornet Drone, making that possible without having to draw into Eater of Millions, and also making Link Plays possible without having to draw Scapegoat and wait two turns. It's very, very good for the deck. Then you also combine this with the fact that the deck still has access to cards like Afterburner, Jamming Wave, Can Play Widow Anchor. So the deck now has more cards that are more accessible off Engage 
they can out cards on the field as well without having to rely on Eater of Millions being hard drawn or rely on Scapegoat being hard drawn and surviving for a couple of turns. It makes the deck a lot better at being proactive at dealing with threats that exist on the field strictly because you have a token generator that gets used twice a turn basically minimum and then you can normal summon a monster and thus make Link 3's like Nightmare Unicorn or Ningirsu as well to out other cards. And then you have things like Light Stage that are pinning back row down to where they can't be activated that makes these Link plays even better at sticking. And then you have cards that you can search like Afterburner or Jamming Wave that can further out more cards on the field and basically get a lot of value if you have three spells engraved by doing your, you know, Light Stage shenanigans before you used Engage into Afterburner or whatever. It's very much a thing where the Sky Striker engine being put into the Trickstar deck makes it a lot easier at outing things on the field, thus it makes those Trickstar cards, those Trickstar monsters like Licorice and Candina, carry a lot more weight because they can actually just poke for damage turn after turn and do really well in terms of like keeping your opponent down in life and then end the game whenever they want to. So with the Trickstar engine, you have the attack output, you have the oppressive, you know, aggressive attacking nature of the deck of putting damage in onto the board quickly, which was something the Sky Striker deck doesn't have access to in a pure form. And then you have the Sky Striker engine with its toolbox ability of having outs to cards, making link plays happen, all that sort of stuff benefits the Trickstar deck that never really had a way to pinpoint out cards on the field in a very quick and easy manner. And at least in terms of an engine card, it didn't really have anything like that. But now you have access to that because Engage is an engine card because it's going to be searching these cards, making your deck more consistent, and potentially drawing you cards in the process. So thusly, it's not a random card you have to draw anymore to out these cards. It's literally draw drones to make a link to, or draw engage to make a link to and possibly draw one to two cards, thus making your deck better. And then that's not even factoring in searching afterburner or jamming wave and getting pluses there in terms of outing additional cards on the field. So even that by itself is all well and good. But then you have to factor in the fact that because you have access to these link plays that can be done with Engage and Hornet Drone, they can be done so quickly. Because of that, you have to factor in that the infinite firewall Lilybow loop can now be performed at almost any stage of the game, starting at turn one, very consistently, and basically at any point during the game, whether your board is big and unbreakable or not, if they can stick the play, it doesn't matter what your board is, they can end the game literally whenever they want to with the infinite Lily Bell loop. So, for those of you that don't know what that loop is, that loop requires a Lily Bell to be in your hand or on field in some way, being added to your hand or whatever, and it requires you to have a Licorice either in your hand or in your graveyard. It's very easy for you to accomplish. The biggest problem that you need to make the play you know, happen is you need to be able to put a Firewall Dragon on the field. That is the hardest part of making the play happen, but it is super easy for you to do now because of Engage and Hornet Drone being so consistent at being able to put Link materials on your field. But basically the play is Firewall Dragon's on the field, Lily Bell is on the field, you attack directly with Lily Bell for 800 or 1000 if Light Stage is up, Lily Bell adds Licorice from Grave to Hand if that's what needs to be done, or if Licorice is in your hand then obviously it's just in your hand. You bounce the Lily Bell to your hand for Licorice and you summon Licorice in the zone that Firewall points to. And then you crash Licorice into your opponent's monster that has more than 1600 attack. Licorice goes to Grave, Firewall Dragon triggers, specials Lily Bell from your hand, you attack directly with Lily Bell, Lily Bell does damage, uses its effect, adds Licorice from your Grave to your hand, and you repeat that cycle 10 or more times until your opponent dies. It's very, very hard for your opponent to have a monster big enough out that you can't kill them through their board with this method. It's it's one of those things where the Trickstar player has to be very low in life, and your opponent has to be very high in life, and you, you have to have like only monsters on the field that have like 2300 or more attack for this play to not be possible at almost any stage of the game. And so this is a play that literally can end the game whenever the Trickstar player is capable of doing it, and it's very easy for you to pull off as early as turn one as a simple two to three card combo. If your opponent has a monster on the field with more than 1600 attack and has at least one link arrow that points to your side of the field, it's a two card combo. Light Stage or Candina plus Engage or Hornet Drone. It literally does the combo because you make Nightmare Goblin, you get two summons of Candina because you summon Candina, add Licorice, bounce Candina to hand, summon Candina again, get Lily Bell, make your Firewall Dragon, and then literally the play is established right then and there. 
If your opponent doesn't have a link arrow that points to your side of the field, but still has a monster with 1600 or more attack, all it does is it becomes a three card combo. It requires either an additional Hornet Drone, drawing Light Stage plus Candina, or drawing Licorice as it's a hard draw, or drawing Lilybell. Basically drawing one of the cards in your deck, like an engine card. It becomes very easy for you to perform this play. Now, it's not a play that will happen too often in terms of good players will try to not leave themselves open to it. But in terms of how this deck performs against pure Sky Strikers, it's actually very easy for you to pull this off on a regular basis. Essentially, you're capable of just trying to use Light Stage to pin down Widow Anchor, and then because they have Shizuku on the field, that gives you a Link Arrow, and as long as your opponent has two spells in Grave, Shizuku is lowering all of your monsters to the point where Licorice can be crashed, and thus the Infinite Loop is established. So, against pure Sky Strikers, the Trickstar deck with Sky Strikers in it is actually very well positioned against pure Sky Strikers currently, because unless you are able to Widow Anchor the Firewall Dragon, Basically, you are going to die if you just play your deck the way you intended to, which is to end on Shizuku. Because the regular Sky Striker deck goes summon Kagari, add a spell back, play it, do stuff, and then link Kagari into Shizuku, which lowers all your opponent's monsters' attack by the number of spells in your grave. And then at the end of the turn, you get to add a card off Shizuku, thus making your you know engine a lot more potent because you're surging another card. There's going to be another card you're going to be using like Jamming Wave or Afterburner during your next turn to out your opponent's board and establish advantage in the game state. But just by playing your deck as a pure Sky Striker deck, you fall victim to setting yourself up for this infinite burn loop to happen to the point where literally every time you perform it, you're taking 100 damage if there's two spells in Grave by crashing Licorice into Shizuku, and thus you're doing 800 every time with Lilybell. Uh, so like it's very easy to understand why there's not going to be a difference in life points that matters that's big enough for you to not die. Uh, so like the Trickstar Sky Striker deck is very well positioned against the um, against the pure Sky Striker deck because of this factor. Because literally, it's just the Sky Striker deck playing the way it's intended to. It's not even making big elaborate plays. You're playing like your deck intended to be played, and you're being punished for it because of Trickstar Sky Strikers having this interaction. That is a two card combo because you have the Shizuku there. <laughs> so there's there's all sorts of factors that go into it, but that that play is very possible to do outside of that. Like I said, it just becomes a three card combo outside of that or just less, depending on whatever point of the, of, the, of the game state the game is in. Like, if reincarnations are engraved to revive monsters, it becomes easier to do every time that becomes a factor. Scapegoat obviously makes it easy to do, because Scapegoat is a one-card firewall. There's, there's all these different factors that go into it that make the deck very oppressive at doing what it needs to do with that firewall play if it needs to close out a game immediately. So, it's one of those things that the deck has a lot of factors going for it, has a lot of strengths, that are counteracting weaknesses of the other archetypes, and it's definitely something that you should look into and playtest a bit with if you are looking to play at any events going up until North American Nationals, because this is definitely the deck to beat going into Nationals, because there's no more large-scale events happening before then to change up the status quo. It's definitely the deck that everyone has their eyes on and looking at trying to beat, so you might want to understand how it works a bit better and understand that it's not just the time procedure changing that made the deck capable of topping as much as it did. The deck is very good at doing what it needs to do now. But anyway, that is going to be it for this video. I've talked and rambled on long enough in terms of why this deck is a decent deck, which is something I never thought I would say. I never thought I would say that there's a good Trickstar deck ever in the format, but this is one of those instances where the deck, literally all the weaknesses and all the things that made it not that great of a deck are being counteracted by the strengths of the other engine being used in the deck alongside it. And I'm actually perfectly okay with that. But anyway, if there's anything I missed or any questions you have or comments or concerns or whatever, leave them in the comments down below. I'd love to read them, maybe address them as well uh, as, you know, replies and stuff like that and try to help you understand the deck a bit more, potentially. Stuff like that. But other than that, as always, guys, thanks for watching. Thanks for your time. If you like the video and want to help support my ability to make content, Patreon link is in the description down below as well. Any support is greatly appreciated. Any amount, no matter how large or small, is a fantastic way to invest in my ability to keep making videos and putting time out to do those, because it does become quite a problem trying to schedule time around this sort of nonsense. But I digress. Links, as always, are in the description down below to my Twitch if you want to go follow that and get notified next time I do a live stream, my personal Facebook fan page, as well as my personal Twitter account, which is new. If you want to go follow that and connect with me on Twitter, then definitely do so at that link. But other than that, as I've already said, thanks for watching. Thanks for your time as usual, guys, 
and take care. I'll see you in the next video.